G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this video is a video tutorial on perspective and it's part of a set of six videos that I'm doing on the fundamentals of drawing. So if you're interested, make sure to click the link on the screen and in the description to go check out the other videos. And uh, also if you're interested, all of the reference files for these videos are free to check out and to download and to look at yourself. So if you're interested in checking out the Photoshop file that I'm using here, make sure to check out the link in the description. So like I said, this video is on perspective. There are a few different tools and ways that we can use to create that sense of depth and scale. And I'm gonna go through that in this video. And the first is something that we call one point perspective. It's the most straightforward. And it's the idea that we can use one point and have a line go out of it in any direction, be it up, down, side to side, or on any angle. And essentially that would be representative of that perspective. So using one point perspective, I might, let's say, draw a lamp pole. This will do. So let's pretend this is a really well illustrated lamp post. <laughs> one of the fundamental principles of perspective is that things get closer together the further away they are. So if I select this and copy and paste and then follow this perspective line along the bottom here, drag it along one, two, three squares, and then control T to manipulate and bring it down to size. We wanna make sure that the top follows the same line that the top follows and that the bottom follows the same line that the bottom follows. And we can do that a few times. We can paste, manipulate, drag it to size, follow it one, two, three squares, resize it until it hits the top and then do that again, paste, manipulate, one, two, three squares away and resize until it hits the top. And one more time, just for good measure. If I hide my perspective grid so it doesn't look like I've used it, you can see what looks like a pretty organic sort of line of perspective. This could very well be a park with a path converging and getting closer to the viewer and with some lamp posts in a row. And it would look pretty normal to us. But something to point out is that the distance between each one is smaller and smaller smaller the further away they become. And that would continue all the way up until we reach the point. And then of course we couldn't fit any more lamps in. So that's one of the first and most important things to remember about perspective. So if you're drawing a scene and you're laying things out, you gotta make sure that you're allowing for that distance growth as things get closer to you. But the cool thing about using perspective grids like this is you essentially have a really easy to follow framework to use in drawing your shapes. So let's say for example, I draw a square here, I can follow this line along, and then while I'm not resting on this top grid anymore, I can still use these two lines and follow somewhere in between them to get the angle that I need to show where that line would be. Then after drawing the bottom line, I can do the same with this line edge here. And then I've got a box in the right position, depicted on the right angle for where it is in this scene. So let's say for example, there was a path going along here. We don't necessarily need to draw along specific lines, but they're good to use as a guide. So that's our path. Let's have a main road going along here. And then let's have on the other side of this road, a park bench. Now I'm not gonna actually draw the park bench, but I can roughly indicate its shape and use my perspective grid to give me the basic way it would be angled. Now it's not that pretty and I'm not entirely sure why there's a floating box in the middle of a park, but you can see that pretty quickly and easily we were able to follow that one point perspective to create that sense of dimension in whatever this scene is supposed to be. Now, wherever that point is in one point perspective is also where the horizon is. So if I'm to draw a line all the way along there, you can see pretty clearly that that's where the horizon is. If I drew that higher, that obviously wouldn't make any sense. It doesn't make any visual sense whatsoever. So we use our horizon line and then we find a point on our horizon to converge everything towards. And that is how one point perspective works. This method of perspective is most useful for images that are sort of center biased or have a very clear singular focal point. But then we move on to two point perspective. And as you can see in this example, we have point here and a point here. And these both have lines going out from them. This one has lines going out like this and this one has lines going out like this. And it doesn't matter uh, what angle the line is going out from, from that point. What matters really is where that point is and that the line that is directly connecting these two points to each other 
is what we would now see as the horizon. So I'm gonna now use two point perspective to create a zigzagging staircase. This would normally be really tricky to do without any sort of reference or uh, guidelines that we have here. But because we have these guidelines, I'm able to use them to create a complex object with a real sense of scale and physical accuracy. So I'm going to start off with the base of the staircase angling in this direction and the stairs are going to go up. So obviously when the stairs are going up like this, I'm not following the, uh, the perspective lines. But then when we reach what will be the first platform, I can then draw a line across and use the perspective lines as a guide and draw between them. So for example, following this line here, that would reach over to the perspective point on the right and using this line here that would follow along to perspective point on the left and using the guidelines for those points as reference, I've created the first platform. Next, I have my stairs continuing on this upwards angle and then I have the next platform. This time the angle flips because we have crossed the horizon line. Now below the horizon line, this platform is easy to see. It's visually unhidden. Whereas once we cross the horizon line, the platform is going to be hidden by the staircase itself. Now we need to remember that because we've begun this next tier of staircases with the lower foundation edge pointing towards the perspective point on the left, that will happen for the anchor point on the top with the, the line at the top pointing again towards the, the perspective point on the left. Now I'm going to draw the platform even though it's invisible and covered by the staircase just to show that we're following these perspective lines still. Furthermore, I'm gonna draw all of the shapes of this funky staircase just to demonstrate that we can create the entirety of the 3D structure following this perspective method. And then finally, using the bottom anchor point here, we follow the staircase up one more flight and we're using the purple lines that link to the perspective point on the right this time as our anchor point. And then the last platform is going to be pointing towards the perspective point on the left. Now to find out where this, this end line, the, the end of this platform should finish, we can simply come to the platform end on the right and follow a line down and check out where that line goes and then follow that along all the way up using our grid reference and then we can see where the bottom line of that end platform would be. And that is how we can use the points of perspective as a guide to create the basics of this staircase. Now that I've got the basic structure of my weird staircase here, I can hide my perspective reference, my guidelines, and I can simply add the lines for where the steps are gonna be, but make sure that we follow the angle gradient as it goes from one angle to the other. And then from there, I can add the ridges of the steps for each level and make sure as the angle changes, indicate where the top of that step is. And of course, as we reach the horizon line, the top of the step is hidden, but make sure each step sort of follows that perspective guide. Now it's a little confusing at times, but just make sure that if all else fails, we return to our grid method. We go back to our reference of the, the points of perspective that we can follow. And of course, I'm just doing sort of construction lines and being pretty rough with it all. So don't mind the fact that it looks a bit messy, but you can see the, the end result is what looks like a staircase in space. It actually looks like it has some dimension and it's following actual perspective. Now to draw something like this without any sort of reference or without using a clear methodology of perspective would be pretty darn difficult. So using two point perspective can be very useful. We don't necessarily have to have everything in that scene follow those two points of perspective. We could have a circular room and use two points for a particular object to create that three dimensional object. Three point perspective follows the same idea. We have the two points on the right and then we have a third point that we can put basically anywhere. And in this example, the third point is at the bottom here. One of the coolest ways this can be used is to create some sort of a cityscape where we have a building, let's say the corner building of a street. We follow our perspective lines to draw the sides of that building. And then we can continue to use this grid as a reference point to continue to draw these buildings. Now, of course, here we're using the same idea that we began with, with the lamp posts, and that is that the further away they get, of course, the closer they are together. So as I've drawn more buildings and it goes along, those lines get closer and closer. 
and the gaps get smaller and smaller. Now I'm going to cheat here and be really, really sneaky and just copy and paste all of these buildings, flip it horizontal, and then just put it right here. And the advantage of using the perspective grid is that if we're following everything fine, it'll look fine in reverse. The other cool thing about using this perspective grid is that even if we shrink it in, we're still following the perspective grid because you can find a place in which it matches those lines like that. But I'm going to go back to what I had and I'm going to now draw a path following these perspective lines. That's going to go all the way to the perspective point. And I'm going to very roughly use my pencil sketch tool to draw some lines to indicate layers in these buildings that I'm drawing here. Now I can hide my reference lines and I can draw a door on this front building and I can draw a window and I can draw people. And the idea now is that we have almost a fish eye length ang and the idea now is that we have almost a fish eye angle of a street and we can continue to use these perspective points to draw objects and draw people and buildings and so on and so forth. But with these but with the additional perspective point, we've added, we've added a lot of extremity to this angle. Now, if I wanted to reduce the extremity of this angle, I would just simply need to move the perspective point, which is at the very bottom that all of these lines are converging to, move it further away, which would soften the angle of these lines here throughout the entire image. I hope this video has been useful to you. Once again, make sure to check out the other videos as part of the fundamentals of drawing video stuff that I put together for you. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. You can get the reference files for this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And if you want the reference files for all the tutorials I've ever made, check out the tutorial archive. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.